23 years. Five, 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 Welcome to the Hank Cisco Show, ladies and gentlemen. Don't touch that dial. We got a good show here today. In fact, uh, I'm going to bless myself and make sure the show goes over good, okay? Because I got a priest sitting next to me here. And, uh, you know, uh, the, and we're going to talk about history. We're going to talk about history about a church in Philadelphia. Uh, it's in the Philadelphia section. It has, it, it's in the Kensington, Fishtown, Port Richmond. Uh, what else? Bridesburg. Who? Bridesburg. Bradford. Oh, okay. In fact, uh, Kensington, I, 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 I remember Kensington. I had my first professional fight in Kensington at the Cambria. I got knocked out in the second round with TKO. The referee saved me. <laughs> but uh, that, that's what I have. So when I heard yeah. about this church in St. Saint, uh, Saint Anne, you know, in the, right around where I uh, had my first professional fight. And uh, so I, my good friend, Drew Monaghan, who uh, I've been a friend so long, he was a policeman in, uh, in Abington, and, uh, and I was a policeman in Norristown. Then he became, he became an agent with the uh, Attorney General's office, and we were great friends. And he's the one that told me, Hank, I got a good show for you. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I blessed myself, ready to go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have them introduce themselves. I'm going to talk about this church. The church, the history about St. Anne's Historical Society, okay? So we'll start off with you, priest. Yes. Father, tell them who you are and what the scoop is. Well, I'm Father Ed Brady. I'm from St. Anne's Church, right? That's down. the church. That's no, the church. Listen, I don't want to say anything, but I think I should have went to church before I went to that fight. Maybe I'll just... <laughs> oh, well, you God. never know. Hey. I, I blessed myself <laughs> before the fight, but that, that's not enough. You've got to be better than that. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's a phenomenal church, you know, and has a very, very long history. It was established on July 4th, 1845, and there's just a lot of great heritage there that needs to be preserved. And... That's what our historical society is all about. You know, that's great. You know, it, it's good. You know, what did Harry Truman say? What's new? The history we haven't read. That's what we're talking about. What we, what we haven't read. What we, the, the history about the, this church. So, and we have two gentlemen here that are, you know, part of society. They're to keep the ball bouncing. Let people know about this. Okay. Right. So tell them your name and what you're going to do here. Hank, I'm Lou Ferrero, and I joined the group. You're Paisan. Uh, yeah, yes. What do you go between the two Irishmen yeah. here? Well, I'm half Irish on my mother's side. Oh, okay, time. all right. Now, you know, I, I was born in Ireland, you know, Coney Island. <laughs> right. that's, a, that's a social security joke. You get it when it's 65. Uh -huh. go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I'm a retired engineer. I have an interest in local history, especially Catholic history. I'm the former president of the American Catholic Historical Society, and... Um, one of the team asked me to stop in, and I got hooked. Oh, my God, I'm glad you're here. So, okay. My name is Tom Lyons. I'm going off you, Hank. I'm not in the parish. My parish is St. Francis Xavier over in the, over in the uh, parkway. And uh, Father talked to me at a Friendly Sons of St. Patrick. He's a Kanye in there, right? Yeah, over uh, cocktails uh, where everything Irish starts. <laughs> <laughs> We're having drinks, and Father said I had this idea. I'm trying to get some people together, form this society, so we can look into the background of St. Anne's Church. There's two cemeteries there, and the belief is there are some famous people buried there. In fact, there are over 50 people from the Civil War buried in both the cemeteries. So Father had this idea to enhance the value of the parish, to uh, learn more about the area, and hopefully to get some life in the parish. So he said, I'm, I'm throwing a group together, and he has now, I think we have eight people on the committee. So he asked me, I said, sure, I'll join. And I'm a friend of Drew's as well, so that's right. how... That's why I got hooked up with Father. So. Well, you know, it could be nice to maybe later on you get some photographer in Philadelphia to film, you know, the cemetery, the, the, the church and all, and talk about it. And then I'll put it on my show here, and we can talk about it, you know, rather than... I know, because Drew called me, and we're, this, we slipped this in because my show's... Uh, I'm all booked up for the end of the year. Sure. So I, wanted, I thought this was so important. So, so we didn't have time to film it and everything, but we... If you get it, we'll, we can sure. do it uh, later. So, uh, all right, Father, you, uh, you, you just got transferred over there or what? Well, tell me something about you now. Oh, well, you know what? Actually, I'm from Upper Glen. Uh, oh, County you're a Montgomery here. County man. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, Montgomery County man. Went to a great school at Corpus Christi, you know, so I'm from the area here, and I've been down to St. Anne's since uh, last June, and it's almost a year now, and it's a, just a great, great parish with great people in it who want to do nothing but the best they can for their neighborhood Hi. and this is one way for us just to put us back on the map and to be present 
And as was mentioned before with the Civil War, we have two parishioners on board, Claire Gardner and Kim Milano. Kim Milano, he's written a history of Kensington, and Claire Gardner, she has a relative who actually served in the Civil War. Wow. And we know we have some soldiers from the 69th there. And so we're planning this September to have some more reenactments. September? And just to bring it back, yes. yes well, give me some film on that, you know, because this, this is, you're dropping the seed now. Yeah. We can keep the thing going, okay? Tell me something about your background as a, an architect, you say. No, as an engineer. Engineer. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> well, one builds much. it, one designs not much. it. Once you get, you know, it's an educational once you program. Get the retirement, it doesn't really <laughs> yeah. matter. We're in Northland <laughs> High School, so we're here to educate the public. Okay, you're yeah. listening. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. All right, fine. Well, I, I spent my career at uh, Pico, Pico Energy. Pico, that's where Ed McBride. At, yeah. Ed McBride, yeah. And, His uh, relations are buried there. So retired about six, seven years ago, and. Um, but always had an interest in local history. And I, uh, between old books and, and researching not just family history, but church history and such, uh, I just got more and more involved, especially with, uh, with the archivists. I, I, I love, uh, I belong to one or two organizations with archivists, so I have some experience. And when well, I tell, me, tell me an example of some of the, the, the things that you would research, like uh, uh, historic uh, a bishop, or something? What, what? Well, possibly. Let's say, you know, even St. John Newman. Who okay, St. John uh, Newman. Yeah, I know because he was John Fitch, he's there every every weekend, man. He <laughs> takes care. John Fitch is a good man. Yeah. John yeah, Fitch. Yes. Bishop of Philadelphia, 1852, till when he died in 1860. And my my special interest is the Cathedral St. Peter and Paul, because it's my home parish. Yeah. And my mother's home parish. She was born in 1918. Oh, you got to take care of your good bodies. Good bodies. 93 and still part of the parish. So 93? Yeah. Oh my so God. There, there's my big example. I do research when I can on the cathedral and old stories of the cathedral, so that reaches out. You know, if you ever get an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, St. John Newman, you know, the church there, yes. what's it on? Six the, and Gerard. It's and Gerard. Six and Gerard. Right. The most beautiful church, and, and I it think is. It is. the Pope's been there, you know, and, and, and he is in the, a tomb in the bottom, right? Right in the altar. He's and then the there's a museum there that a lot of people don't yeah. know. Now, you yeah. policemen and wardens and district attorneys and judges, in the, and in the museum downstairs, they have the rope, the last guy that got hung in Philadelphia. <laughs> Mayor Tate has it. Do look at it. Really? It's a rope. Oh! So that's what happened. <laughs> they don't use it in Pennsylvania anymore, but the last guy that got hung was there. So um, I don't, we will talk about that later, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of... A lot of if you get an opportunity, I know there's a lot of bus trips to go to, er and Christmas time, the place is decorated so beautiful. It is. You mm -hmm. know, it's a beautiful church. Yes, you know. it is. And what do you call it? It's in the more than a church. It's a, a, shrine. a shrine. A shrine, that's right. That's shrine right. St. John Newman. Yeah. Well, I went to Catholic school, public schools, you know, and everything, so I forgot that word. Shrine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, St. Peter the Apostle Church at Fifth and Girard. All right, okay. What, shrine is. what do you do? What did you do? What did I do? What did you do? Well, I'm Tom Lyons. I grew up in Philadelphia. What? My name is Tom Lyons, and yeah. I grew up in Philadelphia. I went to school in Philadelphia. What school? I went to St. Joe's College. It's now St. Joseph. Joseph University, you know, and then I went to Temple for my MBA. Um, I worked for a company called AstraZeneca. It's a pharmaceutical drug company. I was in sales and marketing. I worked there for 28 years. Retired uh, 10 years ago. Started my own consulting company and did that for five years. The money kind of dried up, and then I'm going to... Here's a cheap plug, and then I wrote a book, You Can't Get to Heaven on the Frankfurt What's the name of it? You Can't Get to Heaven on the Frankfurt L. You Can't Get to Heaven on the Frankfurt L. I like that. It's about growing up in Philadelphia Catholic. It's about all the adventures we go through as we mature from young little. Well, uh, you bring, you get that, get that book over here. See, we can get it there maybe later on okay. next year or so after September or whatever. We start to show up again because I think that's very, very important, you know, because it's, it's, we see some things tying in. You know, tying in with uh, different yeah. people, neighborhood, diversity, yeah. neighborhoods are changing, you know. Right. And that's so important that we, we you know, we, we helping different people, you know. Yeah. And, and you, now you're retired. So yes. here you are, you're dedicating your time on this program. Well, I'm, in, I'm actually involved with Drew and Father on um, several Irish groups, the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick. We're all members. Uh, we're all, I'm members of the Mayo Association. Yeah, well, we had the Commodore Pat Barry. Yeah, on so. St. Patrick's Day, I had the the, the Mayo the, group in here. Yeah, I had a guy singing, a couple of singers, yeah. you know, and I just bumped into an Irish dancer. He works with my daughter, and at lunchtime they had him dance. Go, oh my God! I said, I want him on my show. Sure. 
Oh, I had like I had an flatly. Irish singer. Was Go River Dance? You ever see that show? What? Well, yeah. River Dance. Are you kidding? That flatly. Through my hands, always go, Hank, put it on. He's, yeah. he's, the, the show's on, you know, but I don't get the same channel he gets. See? So uh, anyway, uh, I'm involved with these fellows in different committees. Lou and I are on the board at, a, at the Catholic Philo Patreon uh, Institute, which is uh, our, our job there is to uh, promote and the, uh, the this quality of Catholic education in the Philadelphia that, area. The purpose, the purpose of this, what are you going to accomplish by... That's spending all its time on this project. What are we going to accomplish? Okay. What, are we, what, are we, what are we doing? Well, part of it is going to be we're looking into the connection with Duffy's Cut. Yeah. Well, okay. who? Now, Does that mean Duffy's that, yeah. Cut. Duffy's Cut, it's a project. Do you want to yeah. elaborate on that? Duffy was a, was a fellow. I guess he was more or less like a, um, uh, I guess he was a, a job broker. He would stand down at the docks in Philadelphia around 1850, and as Irishmen came off the boats, he would get them jobs. So he took a group of 57 Irishmen out to Malvern, and they started to build a railroad. After two or three days, they had a serious disease. I'm, I'm not sure oh, what it was, yeah. cholera or something. Well, yeah, they had the plague then. The plague yeah, or sure. People were yeah. dying and left them. So right. they got concerned, and uh, they killed these 57 people. Oh. Put them in a mass grave, built a railroad on top of them. Well, there's something in the paper about right, that. Right, exactly. Long ago. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. They were just placed to rest. Yeah. I just read six something. of them. There were six. There were six. Th there's, there's actually 57 there. They can only get the six. The other are buried way under the railroad. So they took the the six they could take out of the ground, and took them over to West Laurel Hill Cemetery, Cemetery on March 9th. March 9th. Nice right. ceremony. The fighting 69th was there. Right. You know, fives and about yeah. five to six hundred people came there. It was on TV. Yeah. Great coverage by the Inquirer. So finally these people who were dead hundred and some years finally oh got their God. At least burial. they, you know, yeah. get a yeah. closure. Yeah. And what we're trying, yeah, exactly. And closure is very right. important right. for the entire community on something like that. And what was wonderful was the superintendent down at West Laurel Hill Cemetery, when he found out that Duffy uh, was connected with St. Anne's that what, part of what we're trying to do is to s establish where he's buried and they graciously said they would donate a, a, a headstone for that. Right. So that could, could so be a continual connection with those occurrences and events so many years ago. Well, now, it, there's some money, you need some money to help out uh, restore some things and all. Isn't there a, a fundraiser or something? Uh, is there anything coming up that... Uh, could have some, maybe have a spaghetti supper. <laughs> hey, we do have a fundraiser. We do have a, uh, on Sunday, May the 6th, May the 6th, from 4 to 7 day? at St. Anne's, May the 6th, May, May 6th. the 6th, Sunday afternoon, from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 7, Irish music, of course there's going to be food and drink there, there's going to be a presentation. I, that's, a, that's May the 6th uh, at St. Uh, Anne's. At St. Anne's, which is, is, is at Lehigh Avenue. Avenue is it an, an auditorium there yeah. or what? Yeah, a very nice large auditorium. The exact address is 2328 East Lehigh Avenue because you need to park on Lehigh Avenue and then walk back to Tucker Street yeah. and to get into the uh, building there. And it's a wonderful social hall that's there. It's from 4 to 7 p.m. And it's going to be a wonderful presentation. There's going to be a presentation by a, a man named Ken Milano. A local historian. He's written five books. On oh, Kensington. no kidding. He's going to make a presentation that day, and uh, he's going to go through the history of the church and also the history of the area. And we're going to have uh, Jerry Timlin. Do you know who he is? Who? Jerry Timlin. He's an Irish entertainer. Timlin and Kane? Uh, the Timlin only Kane? Irish entertainer I know is the guy who used to be <laughs> down at uh, Wildwood. Uh, what's his name? Cozy <laughs> Morley. Cozy Morley. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Cozy Morley, man. He was he my great. man. Yes, he is. Yes, you, he he is. He'd open the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my, this is my nightclub. It's a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was great. Yeah. He's still around, but I understand he's, he's not, uh, not too well. But Timlin yeah. Kane. But God bless you, yeah. Cozy. You, you made a lot of people it. happy. We used to take a ride. When we'd ride down the, uh, on the bus, the Atlantic City. And we would put that it tape on and have everybody roaring in the yeah. bus going down. Well, Timlin and King, they graciously donated their time and their efforts to this cause, which is wonderful. And actually, they were honored this year in the Ring of Honor for the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Philadelphia. So we're very grateful right. for everything that they've done there. And this is the first in a series of fundraisers in order to continue to sustain the right. church within the neighborhood. Because the, the church within the neighborhood is so important to the people. Yeah. And so this is one in a series, and I'm hoping it will continue on for well, much time to come. 
how, it had the, the your neighborhood, uh, like the houses falling down or breaking up or what? It's, what's that scoop? What kind of neighborhoods no. are, are still together, everything? Oh, everything's together, you All know, right. and the neighborhood is good. The housing is because good. I want people to think and say, "Well, Philadelphia, they think it's yeah. falling down or something," you know. No, so, no, you know, no. There are certain no. neighborhoods they stay together, right? This yeah, part of yeah. Kensington and Fishtown, people have a lot Fish of town. pride. I like that Fishtown. People have a lot of pride in their homes. And you know, we're not yeah. no calling Italian. Say Baccalato Town. <laughs> <laughs> Baccalato is a it's codfish. Well, whatever. They say Fishtown else. came from from two. Why were they called Fishtown? That's town? what we're going to tell you that. Now, Fran Letter used to be. There's uh, lots of Catholics who live in the area, and they used to buy their fish on Friday. Oh. Fish town, or they worked in the docks. They were longshoremen. Oh. Well, they they see were. That? They lived there, and they walked to the docks, and then they came back. They called it fish town. That's that's. Yeah. See now, yeah. I never knew that's that. That's neighborhood. See, yeah. It's education, okay? <laughs> oh my God! But that's right, right, right. You had to eat fish on well, yeah. eat fish on Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about that? Well, let me tell you. Uh, the people who are working on the committee, I think it's important. Oh, yeah, to yeah, mention some of these people are volunteers, they've been yeah. helpful. There's right. there's eight people now, three different faiths. There's the Quaker, a Presbyterian, the Roman Catholic. We got a diversity? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. No it's kidding. very diverse. Three people from the parish, and I'm going to name them Ken Milano, who's the historian. One guy, he couldn't come here. You couldn't make it. Uh, He's working. Yeah. He has, he has children. Yeah. Father, of course, and um, Claire Gardner. And Claire Gardner. All are in the parish. Lou and I are not from the parish. And besides that, we have a fellow who's he's well known. His name is Russ Wally in the Irish community in Philadelphia. He's on the committee. Right he's now, in insurance. Are you restoring or anything with the church? How big is it? How many people does it hold? Something like that. So we're trying to. Oh, uh, well, know. you've got to realize there's an upper church and a lower church. So the seating capacity, I would say, is probably, probably around 1,800. Yeah. Total, up or lower. Oh, my yeah. God. It's huge. It's huge. It's beautiful. And the stained glass uh, that's in the upper church, every window has a shamrock in it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah they purposely every put window. it in. Yeah, yeah. They, huh? What would you say? They broke them? No, no. There's a shamrock. There's oh, a shamrock because in every I was window. saying the cathedral, they, uh, they were made at the Catholic years oh, ago. They no. broke all the windows in the cathedral. That's why there's no windows in the cathedral. No, you know no, that? no, no, no. Yeah. Am uh, I right? Yes. Well, so but, much. It's close. I'm, I'm the cathedral guy, exactly. so I'll tell you. Yeah. There, there were churches that were attacked and burned in yeah. 1844. Right. In the Know no Nothing riots. The cathedral started being built in 1846, two years later. And as part of its design, they purposely built it without windows. Oh. So that it would be virtually a fortress and, and immune to any vandalism during its oh, construction. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought so that the they. So the first windows are 45 feet in the air at the cathedral. Yeah. And St. Michael's was a church that was burned down. St. Michael's. St. Michael's on Gerard and Second. Second, second, second and Jefferson. And Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mayor Rizzo. St. Augustine's was burned as well. Which is Mayor Rizzo a, gave me a, a picture of the church, uh, St. Uh, I forget the name. It's in South Philly. Donato, I think, some, some Donato, something like that. Beautiful. Yes. Was, uh, the, the, the architect you know, oh. before they built it, you know. And I think he had presented it to him. That was Owen before he died. You know, he gave me some stuff. You know, he had a garage full of stuff, a, a lot of different things, you know. He was a some of the churches in Philly in the city that were built in the 1800s are fantastic yeah, pieces of, of structure. You know, my windows and the, the beautiful, design. yeah. Th th like the same thing when you go through, look at some of the buildings, like here in Norristown, the different architectural yeah. designs and all, one this mm -hmm. way, that way, yeah, you know. And now these get you, some of these uh, houses they're all the same how if a guy puts a half a load on how's he going to find his house they all look alike <laughs> one guy when i was a policeman one time he got married he's only married like a month and he knocked on the door at two o'clock in the morning he was half bombed you know and he's knocking the door he says oh it's my wife she she locked me out he started breaking the window and, gonna, and he was in the wrong house <laughs> so you know yeah. oh my uh, god you know yeah. but father how long have you been a priest i've been a priest 21 years 21 wow. wonderful years, ordained in 90. Well, we have something in common, 23 years on the police. On his, yes, uh, uh, yes, we do, yes, 20, we do. 24 years on the police department, 13 years on the district attorney's office, uh, boxing, refereeing, and everything. Mm -hmm. So you never boxed, did you? Oh, not yet. Whenever, when you were a teenager, <laughs> when you were a teenager, did you ever get in a fist fight? No, I did not. 
How could, how'd, no, you, how'd, just, you, how'd you handle yourself? Uh, I was taught to use my brains. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. No bullying. But, yeah, you know, yeah. but nobody messed with you, though. You were no, you were no, pretty, no, no. I was, stocky a, guy. I, I was a football player. So oh, no one really, okay. really well, wanted to That's why nobody me. bothered you. Bulked you know, up, you know, when you're up there like that. There's bullying stuff now. They're saying, oh, the bully. Man. Stand up on your two feet. You know, no bullies. They'll, they'll go running away, you know. So go ahead. It's going to. Well, you know what? The other important factor about St. Anne's Parish is that there's a tremendous amount of diversity within the historicity of the parish. So, for instance, we're working on getting these very old records digitized oh. and on the Internet so that no matter where you are in the world, you can access them. And so we're in the process of getting that done. But the other thing also, 21 years, 23 years, that we both know that there's uh, we live in a very transient society right people go from one area to the next right. and so years ago people would marry within their own culture right yeah that was a standard but not anymore no so what we're doing here is important on a global scale reaching out to people who may be interested who may live around the world like I've had couples um, who come back from marriages from Japan in my last assignment and they're back over in Japan and they may be interested but also you have the different cultures intermarrying and so it's really a, a global and a diverse right. project, I believe, that we're working on. Right, right. So, uh, in other words, the people that come here to your church, are they mostly from the neighborhood, or how, how's that work? They're mostly from the neighborhood, but we have a wonderful novena. All right, from a what? A novena, oh, nine novena. days, yeah. July you know, 18th, tell them what a July 26th. There's a guy out there don't know what a novena is. Tell them what a novena is. Nine days of prayer, <laughs> right? What? Nine days of prayer leading up to the feast day of St. Saint Saint Joachim and St. Anne's. Oh. And so on the final day, we have, <laughs> you guys have people coming in from the area. They come from the tri-state area, and they fill that church. And it's phenomenal because their devotion to St. Anne is so strong. Yeah. You know, so for the most part, it's within the local area. But there's also a strong pull from the tri-state area. And they come in at Christmas and Easter and so forth because they want to be back in the church where they were married at, you, you know, know it, where they were baptized at. And there was a lot of proud heritage It's nice there. for people to go visit. Say, look, one Sunday I'm going to go to church at this particular church, you know. That's right. I know my first trip to Italy, my, my brother went there the year before, and he says, Bill, he says, a lot of churches over in Italy, you know, in Rome. So he says, take a lot of $1 bills. My mother always says, every time you go into a new church, you've never been there, you put a dollar in the, in the collection wish, make free and, wishes. You, and, and, and make wishes, right? Free wishes. So I got about $51 bills and put them there, you know? <laughs> I went about four blocks, I was broke. I mean, there's a bird, well, well, there's one on every corner, like, you know? But let me tell you, the beautiful thing, maybe the, the, the churches on the inside, how they're so beautiful, yeah. you know? And, and yes, they I, are. Mm -hmm. I was in I was in South America. Some of the churches down there, beautiful, you know. Right. So I was really I really impressed to that, you know. In the twenties uh, and thirties, parishes like his parish, they would have maybe two thousand people come to mass. It might be eight to ten masses on a Sunday. There might be eight priests there. So this yeah. is a big parish. Right. I'd say anybody who lived in Philadelphia, who's Irish and lives in the Northeast, one out of three people have some connection right. up in St. Anne's. Grandmother, grandfather, oh. sister, aunt, right, in-laws, right, or right. somebody. It was a huge parish. But uh, probably up to the 50s and 60s, was it, Bill? Oh, uh, oh yes, yeah. yes, definitely, definitely. Now, this thing you're going to have on the 6th, uh, you're going to have food there. Yes. Manja? Oh, yeah. yeah. What are we going to have? Uh, Margie Green is settling, is getting that together <laughs> as we speak. I don't know if you know Margie Green, but she is phenomenal. She oh, is yeah, yeah. Uh, Councilman yeah, Bill. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and then, uh, uh, and you're going to have the music too, music, right? Music, yeah. Tim Lincoln Kane or Quanta, Quanta. What is it going to pay to get there or what? Yeah, there's a there's a, a charitable contribution that's tax. Oh yeah, that's all good. right. So it costs you a hundred dollars for uh, three hours, actually longer than three hours, but yeah, you know, with uh, you're going to have entertainment, a presentation about the history of the church and the neighborhood, and then lots of food and lots of drink and lots of social friends. A lot of meet new people. So, how, how long how long you been involved with this now? This uh, or just, just coming around with it? Uh, well, Father could tell you better. I, I I think it started in January this year. We started in January right, this year. Right. We started um, just gathering, and everybody who's part of it is loves history and the historicity that is present there, and and preserving it. And so we just basically let the group form it form itself, gel together, uh, establish different objectives. 
and then and then we take off with it. And oh, okay. It's been really great. And uh, the big help is the internet. Oh, you know, okay. Ken, Ken Milano, he goes onto the internet and he gets the old cemetery records, right? And pictures from the 1847. And so we're able to establish, you how know. How about the Philadelphia Inquirer? Can they help you in some way? Uh, research. I know the Times Herald now. We're having a 20th anniversary, 200th anniversary in North Town. And the Times Herald newspaper is telling you, come down there and you can look through our files and you can take a copy of a pictures like 100 years ago or so. You know, the, the newspaper is 100 and some years old too. See? Sure. So maybe the Inquirer can you say, look, we, we'd like to, uh, some old newspapers, uh, photos and stories, you know. And they'll compile some stuff for you. You know, you got to get out there and bob and weave and hit this guy, <laughs> that guy, boom. You know, I'm with right. this guy, you know. But we think there are some famous people there. In fact, 53 people who fought in the Civil War. That's, that's well, that's high, great. That's, that's high concentration. Well, how about the tough people from the Fighting 69th, which was the Irish uh, group in the, in the war. Probably some people in the Know Nothings, the riots in 1840, June 50. All um, right. Go ahead, go ahead. And uh, we think maybe some historians and people who helped to form the city of Philadelphia may be buried there. Duffy Scott, uh, a daughter of a guy who wrote the song called The Rose of Trolley. Oh, it's yeah, I song. like that. All right. Well, you know what? Our half hour is over. Oh, and uh, uh, Drew Monahan's always said, uh, he's telling me that we're going to build a monument uh, for about the Irish that come over from Ireland, and he was on the committee, and I'm on the committee. Well, we I, uh, I have the Columbus uh, <laughs> Monument in Northtown, so we got together. We did a Columbus uh, yes. Monument here, and he did an Irish one down there. We're coming over and showing them the yeah. what they went through coming from another country. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for allowing us to come into your home, and uh, I bless myself again because I think <laughs> the show went off good, okay? And uh, my good friends here, Talking about history, diversity, putting people together. Okay? Yes. Father, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. All right, let's get a share. A raise it. Allah Zalul means it's to your health. Okay? <laughs> you, got you got your health, baby. You got everything. <laughs> and until we meet, gentlemen, keep bobbing and weaving, and may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Pow! <laughs>